In today's episode, we'll be talking about 10 ways to save money for investment. And if you want to know how you can upgrade your money mindset, then click on the link www.millionairefoundations.com and watch my free training. Welcome, welcome. This is Gur Khan, your money mindset expert. And today we're talking about 10 ways to save money for investment. I mean, today's episode, we'll be discussing some simple yet effective ways to save money and to build your investment portfolio. So let's get started. So point number one or technique number one, okay, is automate your savings. And this is, I've, I've heard about this since the beginning. And as much as you think you know, you'll do it, yes, you'll be fine and so forth. It's really difficult to do it manually because you'll forget, you'll put it off for later or you'll, you know, you'll find that the, some of the bills have gone. And before you know it, your money, it's it's gone. It's it's no longer there available for you to put, you know, put savings aside. So you need to pay yourself first and you have to make a decision. Doesn't matter how much you could be. You can start with one percent, half a percent. I always talk about percentages, not necessarily um, you know, a dollar amounts because percentages you can sort of measure and you can increase as your as your pay check increases. Okay, so set a certain amount. It doesn't mean have to be a, you know great amounts. So it could be half a percent of your income that you're going to save on a regular basis and automate it. And the first and the best way to save money for investment is to automate your savings. Uh, savings by setting up an automatic transfer for a fixed amount. From your normal checking account to a saving account, you can ensure that you are constantly saving each, consistently saving each month. And that this can help you build a solid base for, you know, of your savings, which you can use to invest in the future. You can either, you know, put this towards your house or, um, you know, put it into index funds or, or whatever else. Start saving, start somewhere. OK, and if you've never saved before, this is probably the best way for you to get started, even if it's a small amount. Now, I I have said this before, start with a percentage. But if you really, really struggle with percentages, just start with fifty dollars like or ten, ten dollars. Just start. That's it. Let's just start. OK, number two cut back on unnecessary expenses. So another way to save money for investments is to cut back on unnecessary expenses. Take a look at your monthly expenses and see what you can cut back, right? For example, you could try cooking at home uh, more often instead of eating out, cancel subscriptions that you, you know, you don't need. You have, I mean, we know we have, I know, Prime and Netflix and Disney and Apple and God knows what other, uh, other subscriptions that you may have going at the moment. You know, do you really need those? Seriously? Or can you save on those? And honestly, I I don't believe in thinking small. I just believe in respecting money. So instead of having, you know, holes in your pocket and all this money being drained out, if you respect money, you would, you know, patch up those holes and you save that money and, and, and send it towards investments, right? At least savings initially, and then it obviously put in towards the rights of investment. So this is why it's really, really, you know, really, really good. Also, something else could be they could use a cheaper, um, you know, phone tariff or something else. There are many ways. If you look at your daily expenses on a monthly basis, there's probably a good amount of saving that you can do in there. And it, and sometimes you just really have to think, do I really want that? Do I really need that? Can I save up on that? Right. So this is this is great. And you want to redirect all of that money that you've saved from those subscriptions and those um, unnecessary expenses into your into your investment portfolio. You really don't want to be spending that money on something else, right? That's very important. So that's number two. Number three, and this is one of the most important ones I will tell you. Now, I don't believe in um, that all debt is bad. I think some debt is and some debt is good debt. So that I'm not talking about bad debt. We're talking about debt here Um I mean, good debt. I'm talking, we're talking about debt here, which has really, really high interest. And this is those credit cards with really, really high, high interest rates. So the best thing would be rather than save because of saving or investing, you're going to get low returns. It's sometimes better for you to start, you know, accumulating money and start paying off the high interest credit card, you know, which is taking 20, 30 percent on, you know, for, from you annually. You want to get rid of that ASAP. OK, so uh, paying off the debt is it's a great way to uh, save money for investment. High interest debt, such as credit cards, can really eat up 
significant portion of your income each month and you need to start you know one not spend money through credit cards so we have shared this my technique beforehand which is three steps to cash flow mastery that's another if you haven't heard that podcast go back and look through those podcast episodes and you'll find that one and uh, but generally even you know your what you should be doing is saving um you know as as much as possible by paying off this um this high interest um, um high interest credit cards now by paying it off you free up more money to put towards the investments okay so very 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 good way of saving um money for future investors number four is create a budget now we all hate a budget i know i know i'm one of them i don't like a budget either but you really must create a budget uh, you know, by creating a budget, you can also help save money for investment by tracking your ex- expenses and setting limits for each category. Um, you will you'll find that, uh, you know, you'll be better able to you're better able to control your spending. You won't be doing that, you know, that that spur of the month spending or when you go shopping and you're spending more than you, you, you more than you have a budget for. Uh, like for example, I have a budget for my shopping and I, I I I use the technique of shopping through my credit cards. It's a technique that I use. So I use my credit cards for my living expenses on a monthly basis and I pay for my credit cards. It's just a way to build credit. And also it's, it's but I don't pay any interest because at the end of the month, I'm going to pay it off. But that's my budget. It's a way to, for me to budget as well as to build my credit through my credit cards. So this is the reason why it's not, you know, it doesn't have thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds as a, as a limit on it. It's a decent amount. So if I need to pay something, I can, but it's not, it's not hundreds of thousands or anything ridiculous like that. It's not even tens of thousands, it's quite in the low, low figures for this reason. So I can use it, spend it, and I can do all my buying from it. Okay. Number five is shop smarter now i have a cousin i can talk about who is the best deal finder on the planet she's amazing and she's not stingy by any means at all i wouldn't say she's you know i wouldn't say she's a spendthrift but she's not stingy either she just likes to you know take her dollar her pound bar and she she buys good you know she buys expensive items she buys you know, she goes on luxury holidays, she'll do things, but she'll, she'll find a way to make her pound go further than I do all the time. Now, if you can get in the habit of shopping around, looking for sales and discounts, I am not asking to go into the scarcity mindset. Again, this is not coming from like, oh, I don't have enough money mindset. This is coming from the mindset like, I want to respect my money. If I can pay 15 pounds for something, why would I want to pay 50 pounds for it, right? It's that kind of mind, a mindset. You want to respect your money. You don't have to go for the cheap stuff. Absolutely not. But why would you want to spend a lot more? And, and a lot of the times people pay for labels just for the sake of it. I really don't buy, believe in labels. I believe in quality. So when I buy something, I'll pay the extra amount, but as long as it's based on quality, not because it's label. I'm really not into labels. And the only reason, the only expensive that car, I mean, the expensive thing that I will have would be a car. Like I have my Mercedes and I probably would go end up having my next car probably be either a, a Mercedes again or a Bentley. I was looking for Tesla, but Tesla's lost interest for me now and I'm no longer interested. So it will be, again, probably be an upgrade on my Mercedes or would be a Bentley, right? So that's that's the only, as much as extravagance as goes for me. Otherwise, I go for quality, not labels. And I would recommend that for you as well, right? And also there's no shame and, and um, embarrassment in looking for, you know, good deals. Like when I look for holidays, I do shop around to see what where, where I can get the best holiday from working at the best deals from yes i'm going to buy a certain standard i don't buy less than five five star holidays for my family but i'm also looking for the best price that i can get for that five star yeah so there's nothing wrong with that so i mean if you could buy generic uh, something else is if you can buy generic brands and, and you know for, instead of looking for high name brands you can use coupons promo codes all of those things what you find these small savings do count you know count and over a long period of time and you can accumulate those and actually add them to your investment portfolio. So people say, I don't have any money. Well, how about checking how you're spending? And they're just keeping an eye on where you're spending and how you're spending it goes a long way. Yeah, so that's one. Next one is number six <laughs> is invest in a USA would be 401k, your, your retirement event. In UK, we're looking at pensions. And um, in UK has recently changed the law. So they we used to be able to invest forty thousand a year 
into our pensions and that would be taxed. So that would be tax deductible for my income. So the, the tax man gives the money back basically on that. And um, but whereas now they've moved that that, that bar up to sixty thousand now. So you can actually potentially save up to sixty thousand in your pension. Uh, and you know, and that's a tax deductible. Now, depending on your income, you may not have sixty thousand to be able to uh, put into it, but start somewhere. At least start putting money in there. And what you'll find is that is your, uh, you know, your your fund, your your pot of money that you have for your future when you want to retire. Whatever that major may be, maybe fifty five, maybe sixty five, maybe seventy five. Who knows? I don't believe in retirement, honestly. That's my philosophy, but. Whatever works for you, whatever you know, whatever you want to do. I do believe I don't believe in retirement, but I do believe you need to have an age in mind where you no longer have to work, where your passive income um, should be able to take care of your lifestyle. So therefore, you're financially free. So I don't believe in retirement, but I do believe in financial freedom. So this is something you need to. Well, that's another conversation for another time. But coming back to the pension idea, you can put money away into pension, and that's actually tax deductible. And so four hundred one k is great as well. Okay. It's, it reduces it basically reduces your taxing uh, taxable income um and also uh, and both you both in the us and in uk as well your employers would you know um normally many of the employees would contribute towards you you know would match your contributions usually so think about that okay number seven open a high yield savings account now until recently <laughs> in the uk we had hardly any savings because our um, interest rates were at 0.1 it was ridiculously low Interest it have been rising, and I recently got an email from Nat West, my one of my banks, and they're saying to me that, "Oh, look, the interest rates are up on the rise, and now I will get two percent annually on my any money that's in my account." I find that hilarious. I thought, okay, that's not something I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to keep my money in there. You know, imagine getting two percent return on your savings, whereas the inflation at the currently at the moment is a ten percent. It's ridiculous. I would lose eight percent every year, right? So not happening. But anyway, but you can have uh you know you can um you can have I, I know in other parts of the world i think india and i think some parts of usa i don't know the the ins and outs but i do know that some countries do have um, high index high yield savings account where you can start saving money in for the time being right and these these are these accounts typically offer high interest rates uh, rather than traditional savings accounts and allowing you to earn more savings. The only thing is, you're you're if you do open one of these accounts, you're locked in for a period of one to five years or whatever the period may be, and you cannot withdraw money before that before the end of the period. I think that's what I remember the being the technical side of it, but it's an option for you if you want to. Now, number eight is my favorite one. It's index um, investing in index funds. Now, this it has to be one of my favorite, favorite, favorite strategies. It's it's passive. It you know it grows your money slowly, and over a period of time, it's proven to you know give you good results. So, index funds are popular investment option for beginners, like you know, like most people. These index funds track specific market index, such as S and P five hundred, um, you know, or even for the FTSE five one hundred for for UK, and offer diversification and low low fees. By investing in index funds, you can start building an investment portfolio without needing to spend a lot of time researching in individual stocks. I think this is one of the major, major, major benefits of index funds. You're still benefiting from the market moving up in, uh, you know, up at speed or whatever, but you're not having to research individual companies and you're not putting all your eggs in one basket by by buying shares in one particular uh, one particular company. When you buy an index fund, you're buying a group of companies, and that's probably one of the best ways, um, the best things about index funds. And traditionally, they have done really, really well, performed really, really well. Uh, so that's something to, to look into and research. Like I said, that's one of my favorite, favorite ones. Okay. Number nine, avoid impulse buying. So impulse buying can quickly drain your savings up. Absolutely. Okay. So to avoid this, create a list of things you need and before going shopping and stick to it. So normally, um, I'll give an example. So normally when I go to when I do my food shopping, I'm still one of those old people. Like I like to go for my food shopping. I don't do online shopping for that. But I, you know, I like to take my trolley around the shopping market, uh, so supermarket. And when I go with my, when I go by myself, I know which aisle I'm going to go and what I'm going to buy. But when my daughter comes with me, like she did today, we have honestly, we have 20, 30 percent extra because she wants to buy this and she wants to buy that and she wants to buy this and she wants to buy that. And I promise you, I say no two thirds of the time. 
So two thirds of the time I'm saying no. And a third of the time I'm saying, okay, go on then. Okay, go on then. And still we end up paying about 30% more for our shopping. That's just teenagers for you. What can you do? But anyhow, so I normally have, I don't write it down because I know exactly where I'm going to go and buy. But if you are going to go specifically to other places, then it's worth you having a list of what it is that you want to buy and go ahead and buying them. I'll give you another example. I had to buy gifts for a, for a family that I'm going to see over the weekend. So I had in mind, like, I need to get a gift for him or her and, and a child and so forth. And that's a mental list. And I went ahead and just looked at and got those gifts. Simple as that. Nothing extra. I, want, I wasn't shopping for anything else. There's plenty of things. When I was researching, I came across plenty of other things. But it's not the time for me to buy. So I didn't buy. So I'm very good at the impulse buying. I don't really buy things unless I need, need to. And I'm quite secure with that. But this is something, this skill that you need to learn over time. Don't do impulse buying. And my recommendation is that, you know, someone gave to me a while ago. If you have... Uh, if you find that you have impulse to buy a lot of things and you do, uh, you are a victim of impulse buying, then every time you need to buy something, wait for 24 hours and, you know, wait for 24 hours before making the decision. And then if you after 24 hours, you still want to buy it, you know, get, you know think after you thought over it, then go ahead. But if you become, begin to have doubt and you think, well, I'm not really sure if I need it, then go with that understanding and don't, you, know, you don't need it and then don't buy it. Simple as that. Okay. So that's next. Number 10. Oh my God. Number 10 is track your progress. This is essential. Now I am notoriously bad at doing this. I am. Okay. I hate doing, um, you know, I hate tracking my progress. I hate looking at things, you know, systematically. I'm, I'm one of those creative people. I'm all over the place and I like to jump around and like to create things. I don't like to be systematic. I don't like to look at the minus small details. So this is pain, painful for me. It's painstaking for me. But I do it because this is the only way that I'm going to grow. And I'm only going to monitor, see if I've grown from last month or if I've gotten worse from last month and if I've overspending and low underspending and so forth. This is why it's essential that you, you know, you have you, you know, you do this and that you are able to, uh, you know, monitor where you're spending, how you're spending and how much you're saving. Use a simple spreadsheet. You don't have to go really fancy and do all that. Use a spreadsheet or an app even. I prefer an app. So, you know, go, up, you know, but use a um, spreadsheet or an app and just track your savings and investment and your know, investment accounts. And by seeing your progress over time, you'll be motivated to continue saving and it will be, all these tasks, which look very encumbersome at the moment, become easier over time and they become part of your habit. OK, so. So and so finally, you know, this is a, a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed my you know, 10 t tips or 10 ways to save and um, to for to you know save to actually invest in your investment portfolio. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, do send me a comment and let me know. And I will be back um, another episode. Hope you found today's tips useful and helpful and that you're motivated to start building your investment portfolio. Remember, every small step you take towards savings money can and investing can make a big difference in the long run. It's the cumulative effect, okay? We all know that compounding is really, really powerful, yet we are, most people are still not benefiting from the power of compounding. And these small steps do make a big difference in the long run. I will be back with you on another episode, speaking to you and finding a ways to help you to build a better business, build a better life and work on your money mindset. Until the next time we meet, this is Girl Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.